I'm going to go over some of the key points that we need to understand when adding angular momenta. So we'll start by saying that um, we're going to be adding two angular momenta, so we'll have a total um, j. Now remember j is a vector, um, so we can write the total angular momentum as a vector sum. Um, so in general we would have j is equal to j1 plus j2. Um, and you might, for instance, want to couple the orbital angular momentum and the spin angular momentum of an electron. So there you would have that j is equal to L plus s. Now we know, um, because it's an angular momentum, that j squared has eigenvalues of, I'm going to abbreviate it to evals, of j into j plus 1 h bar squared. Um, the question we're going to ask ourselves are, is what values does j take, um, though we're not going to do that in detail, and also what eigenvectors do we find. Um, so let's start by thinking about j. Um, a formal proof of this can be found in advanced quantum mechanics textbooks, I'm not going to go over it. Um, but what you might like to think is that we're using a vector sum um, of the two angular momenta, and therefore we might assume that the maximum value when the two angular momentum are lined up with each other, both in the same direction, is going to be j1 plus j2, um, and the minimum value when they are anti-aligned is the magnitude of j1 minus j2, because angular momentum has a minimum value of zero, so we can't have a negative value. Um, and indeed, this is what we find, um, and it also takes integer values between these two. Okay, so we now know what values j takes on. Um, we can see that... Oops, sorry about that. we can see that, um, as all usual, mj, the z projection of j, will lie between plus j and minus j, um, again with integer values in between, um, and we can define jz is j1z plus j2z. <laughs> now we need to ask the question, how can we represent a state in the space, the combined space of these two angular momentum. Um, how do we represent states? Now, there are two obvious ways. Um, the first way is to use eigenvectors of j1 and mj1, etc. Um, and the second one is to use eigenvectors of j itself. Um, and both of those are legitimate choices. Um, in fact, what we're going to see is how to convert between the two. Um, so for option one, we might, for instance, choose um, j1, mj1, j2, mj2. Um, and I just want to emphasize this is actually a tensor product not a regular product, but I'm not going to go into any more detail. Now, why can't we use that? Well, the problem is that JZ1 uh, and JZ2, or J1Z and J2Z, depending on how you want to look at it, um, do not commute with j squared, so those that the product of those functions is not an eigenvector of j. So we could say as j one z or j two z do not commute with j squared. These are not eigenvectors. of j squared. Now, 
that brings us to option two. Um, we know um, that jz commutes with j squared. That's a standard definition. Um, and we can show, though I'm not going to do it here, you might like to do that yourself, that j1 squared commutes with j squared and also j2. j2 squared. You would show that um, by writing j1 squared and j squared in terms of jx, jy, jz, squaring them out um, and taking the commutators. So that gives us four good quantum numbers. That gives us j, mj, Sorry, made a mistake there. Um, I'm just going to remove that. J, M, J, J1, and J2 as good quantum numbers. And those will label our states. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to say that we'll write these eigenstates labeled by J, M, J, J1, and J2. Um, in terms of those product states we had earlier. We'll use the product states effectively as a basis. Um, so we will write ket j, mj, j1, j2 is equal to a sum over mj1 and mj2 of a coefficient c mj1, mj2. So that's a single coefficient labeled with two indices. And then I'll have ket j1, mj1, ket j2, mj2. <coughs> um, and that will give us a set of eigenstates. Um, something you should note is that we can build, or we can make um, values of j and mj. should be a subscript, sorry, um, of j and mj from more than one pair um, of j1, mj1, j2, and mj2. Um, obviously, there are going to be cases where you can only do it in one way, um, but generally, we can add together different states. Um, so the example uh, is adding two spins, two spin and a half particles. There, if you want, ms equals zero. Um, we can have um, either s equals zero, in which case we have the product pair 1 over root 2, um, alpha 1, beta 2, minus beta 1, alpha 2. Um, or if you have s equal to 1, then you have the pair 1 over root 2, um, and we have alpha 1, beta 2, plus beta 1 alpha 2. Um, so what you're seeing there is that we can take two different combinations of the eigenstates for this system. Um, obviously in a system with a larger total angular momentum then you're going to have more than just those two states um, and you can combine them in different ways to make different eigenstates of the total angular momentum.